Hey guys, Joel here, back with more reactions to Fringe Brand 2, episode 11 of season 4. The last one was quite a sad episode with the girl who could pretty much foresee people's deaths. Uh, not that she wanted to, it wasn't something she asked for, it was a natural gift. She, she was born this way, um, nothing was done to her. But because of that unique ability, it cost her her life because brain was operating on what should we say too high a frequency um and it burned itself out and she ended up having a stroke and there was nothing anyone could do walter is just starting in this episode to try and work out how he can try help peter and olivia is trying to come to terms with asking nina if she's emotionally stunted because the expansion she had done and she was appalled at Nina for yet again saying that they were interested in this girl because she had military applications and all the rest of it but at the same time I'm just trying to work out is this Nina is this alternate version Nina is this a shapeshifter dressed up as Nina? Is it all one and the same person or are there separate entities going on here? I think there is. I think there are two Ninas running around and one of them is a shapeshifter and he's working with David Robert Jones. I don't know if we're going to find out in this episode or not. Let's go see what happens. This is episode 11. With radiation, this type of carcinoma is 95% treatable. First, there's the cure, radiation. It makes you sick, weak. But it doesn't work. Who the hell are you? Not this time, not in your case. They try chemo, but the cell replication rate is just too high. Your bones hurt, they ache, they burn, and finally, full respiratory failure. All from one tiny mole. Why she crossed over? It was Agent Farnsworth. That's impossible. Who gave her clearance? She did. Agent Farnsworth has the same security clearance as any senior fringe agent. In fact, she's responsible for processing transit papers and clearance. So it's easy for her. It's never occurred to us. But she would use it for herself. I got a hunch where she's headed. I'll go get her. How about you and I share some delightful scrambled eggs, Astro? It's Astrid. Astro. <laughs> Still at it after four seasons. You never correct me. I'm sorry if you hear the blinds in the background, but it's very warm in here. You're not you, are you? Call you. I think what he meant was, I will never call you. It's gonna oh, freak her out. <laughs> I always wondered why nobody does that. Olivia told me about you, but it's nice to meet you personally in the flesh. All personal meetings are in the flesh. Reverend Stewart said he would be sorely missed. And they lowered the box down into the ground, and we put down flowers. Yours. Did you love him? Father. It's Calvary. Astrid, I, I think her father her. is dead. And uh, my double's on her way here to, to sort this out. Olivia, the Viper. Walter. What? I know, detente. <coughs> Don't mean to say I have to like her. Less than six hours ago, Chet Williams was diagnosed with stage one melanoma. Stage one, that has a survival rate of 95%. So what are these? Bad mascara day? I say bad day all around. What did he can do to him? Can someone actually cry blood? Really? Okay, no. good news. Walter says that his organs haven't liquefied. So then what else can cause this? Nothing. No idea. Nothing real, at least. You're Astrid. You talk through her as if you were one person. Yes, you could see it that way. It must be pleasant. The predictive science says that these compounds shouldn't interact, but they do. So what, you're saying that it's magic? It's science, just unusual science. Martha Hari, deceived and betrayed anyone yet today? <laughs> it is almost lunchtime, after all. Deus ex machina. The hand of God. The interaction what? of the chemicals in the poison is not predictable. The creation of the toxin requires the assumption that these compounds can intermingle. And in fact, these compounds do not intermingle, except when they are all mixed together, they do, which is a completely unpredictable event. Saying that a person would have to... 
of foreknowledge. I see that the chemicals had already been combined in order to know how to combine them? Correct. Yes. And they're trying to tell us that God taught our perp how to mix a mythical poison? The drinking doesn't kill you. Instead, it shatters the lives of everyone around you. Everyone you love. No one can see the future. You're I think right. he can. There is no future. There's no past. Everything happens right now. Walter, you've been holding on to this stuff all this time? I didn't steal anything, if that's what you're implying. This one item confounded me. Just another of your tools of spycraft, I imagine. A, a sinister communication device. Wow. I really got to you, didn't I, Walter? She bleeding from her eyes? How did you know? There seems yeah. to be a lot of that going around lately. So this is too. If I open up, I'd love to take a look. Asterix, collect a DNA sample. Asterix, can you hand me a cotton swab? Hang on, Walter. I want to get a DNA sample. You think maybe she inhaled something? Yeah, possibly. Could be how they delivered the poison. Please ask Agent Dunham to bring the Absolutely. body. We're gonna need to get this body back to the lab to have it examined. You worked that out with the ME's office? Yeah. Keeps preempting him. Does he always do all the jobs? <laughs> do you feel love for him? I have found that anger inevitably seems to be conjoined with emotional investment. Do you think that is the case? But he is not that son. In that case, wouldn't it be preferable if you chose to believe he was your son, and then you could love him and be happy? He works in an apple. Hey, honey, it's a member security thing. I've got to call you back, okay? If he works just in an airport, have a nice flight. How the hell does he know all of this? Making your next call will destroy your life. Excuse me? You'll be driving. When a taxi cuts you off, your reaction won't be quick enough because you only have one hand on the wheel. Your car is going to flip, shattering your spinal cord. I'm going to spare you from That's all that grim. misery. A painless exit from a living nightmare. <laughs> oh. Wasn't expecting that. He saw me have it in his pocket. He said I was going to have a car accident. I was going to end up like this. Just a different one. This guy predicted what would happen? Yeah. Not exactly, but I guess exactly it doesn't really matter now. May I? Certainly not. That's right. You're still mad at me. Yes, and now you're breaking my concentration as well. Agent Dunham reports that he may be attempting to put his victims out of their misery, and if that's the case, then his murder weapon of choice is consistent. The tears of raw? Yes. What is Logan International? It's an airport, where? All three victims travel through there. That right? She's God. How did you miss that? I didn't. They all had different airlines. They... Hey, whoa, whoa, stop right there! Federal agents, we're in pursuit of a suspect. Federal regulations, you either have a boarding pass or a supervised authorization. Do you want me to find you a supervisor? Actually, that's right. So how does an advanced mathematics professor end up working for the TSA? That's why I originally thought... Well, a couple of years ago, oh, one he came them. back from summer break at his lake house, and he was just changed. But he'd become obsessed with these high-level differential equations that no one could make heads or tails of. Well, that you could, in essence, see past, present, and future simultaneously. A bit like the observer. Well, eventually yeah. solving the equations became more important than class, and soon he just left. Where was that lake house? Well, here we are. Raiden Lake. What? The professor said that Neil thought he could see past, present, and future all at the same time. That's what the observers do. We've just never been able yes. to figure out how they do it. I don't know. I think we should take a drive. Yeah. I've kind of got a haul for this, right? The observers are watching this guy because I think he's figured out to be able to do what they can do. That I couldn't give him what he wanted because of the way that I am. I could love him back in a way that he could understand. I think if I were more like you, he would have loved me more? I think he already did. If I was normal? Wow. It's just a little too coincidental that the guy came up with these theories and computations while he was up here. Well, we're in the right God place. Damn. Gandhi, Joan of Arc, all the rest of them, what's the connection? There. Heroes? 
What else do they all have in common? They're all saviors. Were you fired again? I told you, Mom. I wasn't fired from MIT. I left. I heard you that night, you know. The night Alex died. You said God took the wrong one. Why did oh God take God. my angel, you kept saying? You always resented that I wasn't Alex. God gave me a way to see the future. What are you talking about? Stop! Stop. Don't, Don't do, that. do that! You're scaring You're me! You're scaring me! Huh! You should never have heard that. FBI! FBI, put your hands up. Don't turn around, Barry. He's gonna do suicide by. I'll see you in heaven. No. Yeah, I knew that was no. coming. He's just waiting to make sure you get shot. I think he knew we were coming and he wanted us to shoot him. I guess it makes sense. I mean, he could see the past, present, and future. If he committed suicide, he wouldn't be allowed into heaven. But what about all the people he killed? He thought he was saving them. Here, I want to show you something. Yeah, like what was it? piece of spy tech. Mint. <laughs> <laughs> Similar. They're bobbins, and they're delicious. Bobbins? Most like wintergreen. One for the road. You giving me a send-off? What's going on here? Here it is. Oh, it's that. You're right. It's September's. He must have lost it in 1985. The night he didn't save the boy. The boy is back. Peter Bishop has returned. Okay, first of all, I really enjoyed that episode. That was very good. We got a lot more insight into Astrid that we've never seen before. And because their Astrid was the focal point and she came over here, we got to see both of them um, more than we normally do. Right, just before I discuss that, what he's just said at the end there. Right, so the observer that we know the one that originally saved Peter that now didn't save Peter, if you're following me, is called September. Didn't know that. So that's first off, I need to remember that. I wonder why he's called September. Maybe he was born in September. I don't know. Um, so that guy didn't invent anything. He didn't come up with anything. He worked out computations as to how to use their device, their technology. But he's just said September must have lost it in 1985 when he didn't save Peter. So how did this guy get his hands on it? Or was it just lost there at the near the lake house and it's it's been there since 1985? Because it's just it's not 30 odd years ago to them, it can be just yesterday to them. I thought that was just a spray thing he was using to put them out of the misery, but it's actually whatever they use to be able to observe time and to move through time, some sort of technology. It's very small. Um, and that's the first time I've ever seen it. So how... That's the only theory I can think of, is, is maybe when he lost it, it's been in that area the whole time. It could have just been on the floor or underground somewhere, I don't know, and he's found it. Worked out computations on how they use it, because they know how to use it. He's he's figured it out. Um, I don't know, still not 100% on that. But, the big thing there is he's also just said... He's also not followed the instructions because the boy is back. Peter is still here. So they, that other guy wasn't aware of it. How can you not be aware of it when he's here? Oh, All I know is we are four seasons into the show and I didn't think it could get much better. And it's continuing to improve. Very, very few series do that. They, they hit like a, a certain limit and then they plateau and they either 
trail off or they keep to where they are they, there's only so much you can do there's only so far you can go this series just keeps go, going up and up in my estimation because there's so much more being revealed and so much different things going on that was still like kind of story of the week but it wasn't because it's tied in with our entire timeline and storyline and the, the actress who plays Astrid was extremely good in that really enjoyed that and alternate Olivia for Olivia whatever you want to call her the Viper um, has started to win this Walter round a little bit because she is she's not as closed off and dark and serious as our Olivia is because of the experiences that she's been through even though she's not been through as much in this timeline as she was with the original timeline and she's a lot she's quite fun and spunky to be around and she's got a beautiful smile and she's just having a bit of a fun and laugh with Walter and he's finally started to realize as he's just said maybe you do have some good qualities that I might have overlooked before because I was focusing on all the bad things that you did and not thinking as to why you did them because she's not a bad person uh, we know this now I hated the original Fall Olivia to begin with when she really play stars but it's all everything's changed I still believe Peter is in the right universe is in the right place is out of time because of what he did I don't know how they're gonna fix it I think he's stuck here and I think maybe where they're going with this storyline is this Walter and this Olivia are going to have to learn to integrate him into their lives and everything he knows and we know is gone and it's like a reset and I think he's where he's supposed to be. But not from the point of view of the observers. Of course. Because had none of the timelines or history been touched, neither Peter should have ever survived. Hmm. Anyway, fabulous episode. Right, we'll be back for episode 12 in a few days, guys. Don't forget this uh, episode will be available in full over on Patreon. All you've got to do is click down in the description. You will find the bit link, which will take you to Patreon. Um, and you're able to join and watch the full length version there. Also, don't forget, give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to see more reactions, please hit that subscribe button. Turn the notifications on, you know, when the next episode of Fringe and all the rest of my series will be available. Um, right, I think that's it. Till next time, guys. Take care.